In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This time in the midst of these, as the old song has it, lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer, there's this confluence of both exaggeration of things of lesser importance because there's so little going on for the news to report in politics they call it the silly season because there's nothing to do so everything that may otherwise go unnoticed becomes of such great importance in our own lives we have this depression of activity in some ways which on the one hand can be if our lives are going really well and on full tilt a relief and yet if there's very little in our lives that's going well can be a great burden or it can be some mixture thereof in today's gospel we hear the words of the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoiceth in God my Savior. For he hath cast down the mighty from their seats, and hath exalted the humble and meek. We hear these words of Mary juxtaposing that which is high being made low, that which was low being made high. This very juxtaposition and reversal of roles that I think we often feel in these dog days of summer. To set it in its context, today's gospel is in the sixth month of the pregnancy of Elizabeth, kinswoman to Mary, mother of John the Baptist. And Mary goes to visit her cousin, in her pregnancy, and when she sees Mary, who is herself with child, barely, the Annunciation had happened recently, the babe leaps in Elizabeth's womb and causes Elizabeth to look at Mary pregnant with our Lord and say, blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. In the English speaking world, at least in the post Henrican era, there has been a strange relationship between Anglican Christians and the Virgin Mary Often, I think, the precursor to which was an overemphasis of Mary and the life of the church in the pre-Henrican days. Mary was the accessible one, whereas Jesus was so remote a figure, rarely received in the sacrament, seeming to be the domain of the clergy in some ways. Mary was the one who was the, to use the word of Tony Blair, the people's princess, the one who was accessible, the one who was enshrined in altars all over the place and visible. And so was made manifest in so many visible ways throughout the Christian West. And so was a threat to political power especially with two, with a woman now on the throne. And so we saw in the Elizabethan era, the iconography of Mary erased from our churches, the iconography of Mary taken on by the head of state. And we see this actually illustrated overtly in some of the Elizabeth films that were made in the last 20 years. It is a fascinating study and not one to be gone into in this sermon. But what it speaks to is this. 
We are all desperately seeking a mother in this world. And we are all desperately seeking a mother in the next. We are all desperately seeking a father in this world and a father in the next, a brother and a sister in this world and a brother and sister in the next. Psychologists can speak to the psychology of it. I will speak to the spirituality of it. In God, the creator, we have the perfect father, the one who creates and does not destroy. In the Virgin Mary, we have a mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, our brother, who is the perfect mother, the one born without spot of original sin, the one who at death was assumed to God's nearer presence, the one we can rely on, the one who can pray for us. In our Lord Jesus Christ, we have a brother, one who was born for us, one who died for us and asks nothing of us except our faith, and our lives, but not our lives not to be lived in this world, but our lives lived in the context of him, for him, with him, in him, loving our neighbors as he loves us. It is a heavy burden to those not of faith, but to those of faith. It can be a mantle that is as light as this summer linen chasuble that weighs lightly on the shoulders and reminds us each day of the joy of being brothers with Christ, being a son of Mary, being a son of God the Father. I, as a person not born in the Roman Catholic Church, didn't understand Mary very well as a boy and began to understand her greatly in seminary. And it was at that moment, and if you look along here, the 12th station of the cross, when Jesus, it's not illustrated particularly well here, but when Jesus is on it, he looks down and he's about to die. And I remember the first stations of the cross I went to as a seminarian, we're at the Church of St. Ignatius of Antioch on 87th Street on the west side. And I remember the words of Jesus being spoken. As he is about to die, he looks down at John the Divine, and he looks down at Mary, and he says, Woman, behold thy son. And he turns to John and says, Behold thy mother. And for me, who has during his life struggled with my relationship with my mother. It opened up a spiritual mother that I could have that wasn't dependent on the imperfections of humanity. I offer Mary to you as that mother independent of frail humanity who lives in God's nearer presence, who can pray for us and we with her, who in the words of that wonderful All Saints hymn, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones, leads their praises. That verse which says, oh, higher than the cherubim, more glorious than the seraphim, is referring to Mary. Lead their praises. Alleluia, alleluia. May we rejoice with her whose soul magnifies the Lord, whose spirit rejoices in God, her Savior, in these dog days of summer, these lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. May we ask Mary's prayers for Diana Thierry, our newfound old friend of the parish, whose 
surgery at Hospital of Special Surgeries is went well, but needs to go back tomorrow under anesthesia to have her new joint massaged under anesthesia. May the skilled doctors and nurses care for her and bring her to real health and healing. May those whom you bring on your hearts today, lift them up in prayer and ask our mother in heaven to pray to our father with our brother that they may be healed of all their distress, even as we pray that we can be healed of ours now and in the life to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.